On July 24, 1969, the most important mission of NASA's Apollo program was finally concluded. The Mission 11 returned to Earth without major problems, and the three astronauts on board were back on the surface of our planet. Despite being away for more than a week, the pilots could not return to their homes until 21 days later due to possible infections of viruses or disease that they could have brought from the moon. So, when Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins re-entered the atmosphere of our planet in a capsule stopped by three parachutes, they were transferred into another metallic module. This time, not to leave Earth, but to prevent any existing pathology in the natural satellite from reaching the rest of humanity. The place where they lived for the three weeks was the mobile quarantine module, which was built by NASA in 1967. That aside, during global pandemics, authorities and the general public deploy strategies to curb the spread of a threat disease. One of these strategies, widely used by different countries, and one of the most important in China, where the new SARS-CoV-2 originated, is quarantine. But what do we know about this concept, its origin, and practices? This is exactly what we will be checking out on today's episode, Quarantine. Let's put things in perspective. What is quarantine? Quarantine is widely recognized as the separation and restriction of movements of people who have been exposed to an infectious disease but who do not display possible symptoms in order to observe if they have developed the disease. Quarantine differs from isolation, which is the separation of people who suffer from a contagious disease from those who are healthy. Both of these measures are public health strategies that aim to prevent the spread of contagious diseases. Is there any hidden meaning in the word quarantine? It's nothing serious, but we think you should know about this fact. Etymologically, the word quarantine comes from quaranta giorni in Italian, which in turn comes from the word quadraginta in Latin. The Latin form of the word translate as four times 10. The practice of quarantine began to be used for the 40-day isolation of the sick from the Black Death in Venice in the 14th century. Now that explains it. What's the historical origin behind the practice of quarantine? As earlier stated, Quarantine began to be used along the medical sense of the term with the advent of the 40-day isolation timeline that was declared to people and goods suspected of carrying the bubonic plague during the Black Death pandemic in Venice in the 14th century. During the Black Plague epidemic in the 14th century, 40-day isolates were maintained, the duration of which was set in memory of the number of days that Jesus spent in the desert. Here is the shocking part. The Black Plague is one of the greatest pandemics in the history of mankind, with a death toll that experts estimate at around 200 million. Gruesome. The lead authorities adopted the measure of isolating the sick so as to contain the spread of the contagion. They understood that 40 days was a sufficient period to notice signs of infection and an outbreak. Thus, the recognition that diseases could be contagious often led to the adoption of measures designed to isolate infected individuals or communities. The fear of leprosy, for example, prompted widespread adoption of the control measures set out in Leviticus 13, verse 4 through 5. Meanwhile, in Venice, Italy, when a possible threat was detected among the passengers arriving in a boat, it was completely blocked and entry into the land was not allowed until those 40 days had elapsed, as usual with its 40 nights. All these changes took place as a result of the growth of maritime trade and after the plague was discovered to be transmitted through the ships returning from the Levant. There is more to this theory. In 1423, Venice established its first lazaretto, or quarantine station, on an island near the city. The Venetian system became the model for other European countries and the basis for the widespread control of quarantine for several centuries. In the 16th century, the system was expanded with the issuance of certificates indicating the ports that were disease-free. Clean certificates gave people the right to use the port for free and without quarantine. The quarantine was later extended to diseases other than the plague, especially yellow fever, which spread with the growth of American trade, and cholera, which was associated with pilgrimages to Mecca. In the mid-19th century, the practice of quarantine became more widespread and began to be used arbitrarily. There were cases of perverse and bureaucratic application of quarantine regulations, disinfecting letters and searching for documents was sometimes an excuse for political espionage, and opportunities for bribery and corruption were exploited. General dissatisfaction with the practice of quarantine led to the convening of the first International Health Conference in Paris in 1851, although a few more years had to pass to regulate quarantines. Advances in medicine made them less and less necessary. Today, quarantine is practiced in a much more flexible and less extensive way. How to properly quarantine. The factors to consider before engaging in quarantine. In the case of a global pandemic, the need to engage in quarantine will arise. Let's not even go far. Just the slightest detection of a strange variation of a disease will call for strict quarantine measures. For example, Andrew Speaker, in 2007, was diagnosed with a drug-resistant strain of tuberculosis. 
He was kept at the National Jewish Medical and Research Center in Denver after he failed to isolate himself. Now, quarantine measures may sound like a vacation from reality, an ideal time to marathon a Netflix series and catch up on sleep. In fact, it is not easy to shut yourself away from family and friends. There are practical and logistical challenges and large gaps in official advice that complicate everything further. The terms of home isolation can be onerous and could last for weeks. It is especially difficult if you have young children or elderly relatives to care for, or you live in a small place with many roommates. You will be advised to conform to some set standards for a successful quarantine. Stay at home unless you must see a doctor. No work, school, or shopping. If you must leave your room, wear a mask. Don't share the towels. They sound easy to do quite all right, but are all these factors important? What's the right way to quarantine? Here are some of the new house rules, courtesy of local health officials and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention of Diseases. Wear a face mask. This is the first, and it's a very important rule. If you have to be around other people, at home and in a car because you are on your way to see a doctor, you should wear a mask, and so should the others, depending on the reason for quarantine. Masks should be changed every six to eight hours and should be appropriately disposed. When you cough or sneeze, cover your mouth and nose with a tissue and then dispose of it in a bagged trash can. What do you do next after disposal? Immediately wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Even if you haven't coughed or sneezed, you should wash your hands frequently or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Finally, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth if you haven't just washed your hands. Carry out disinfection. Please do not share plates, glasses, cups, cutlery, towels, or bedding with anyone, including your pets. You don't want to flop this rule. In addition, it is important that you wash these items after use. Countertops, tables, doorknobs, bathroom fixtures, toilets, phones, keyboards, tablets, and nightstands are considered high-touch surfaces, and as such, they should be cleaned often with a household cleaner. Also, frequently clean surfaces that may be contaminated with bodily fluids, such as blood and feces. Undergo strict monitoring. You owe it to yourself to monitor your health and call a doctor if your symptoms get worse. Make sure to inform the medical staff which you are being quarantined for. Regulate household members. Monitored individuals should stay away from their partner, roommates, children, elderly aunt, and other close associates. You shouldn't even pet your dog, and definitely no snuggling with your pet. If you do not have your own room, one must be designated for your exclusive use, and you should use a separate bathroom if you have one. Family members and other household members should monitor the patient's symptoms and call a healthcare provider if they see the situation worsening. When around the patient, family members should wear face masks. If they will most likely come into contact with the patient's body fluids, they should wear both face masks and gloves. These protective devices must be discarded immediately after being used once. Older adults in the household and those with chronic medical conditions are at special risk if they are infected with any form of disease. Therefore, contact with the isolated individual should be minimal. The other inhabitants of the house must remain in a separate room from that of the exposed or sick individual. If possible, other members of the household should not share a bathroom with the inmate. They should also monitor their own health and call a doctor if they have a cough, fever, or shortness of breath. No one pays you to quarantine yourself. Although, in the United States, government officials say they are looking for ways to compensate for the lost wages of those with sick leave. Self-quarantine is an emotional and financial burden for those who have families and also for those who live alone. More intel on quarantine measures. There are quarantine measures that are needed in very worrisome and full-blown situations. One is voluntary confinement for high-risk people, such as the elderly, patients with chronic diseases, or with some immunodeficiency. This measure must be applied throughout the said pandemic. Second, there is mandatory confinement. For people who have been in countries with outbreaks or have had contact with confirmed cases, in these situations, the quarantine period will be equivalent to the timeline designated for isolation. This category also applies to people who live in a geographic area that has been declared high risk by the health authority and who decrees mandatory confinement for the entire population residing in that area. The duration of this will depend on the risk assessment made by the authority. Other measures that help control the spread of diseases are those that reduce the probability that sick people are in contact with healthy people, called social distancing. These are restrictions on the gathering of groups of people, schools, universities, cancellation of public events, football games, concerts, suspension of public meetings and closure of public places, such as theaters, and closure of mass or major transit systems, restrictions on air, rail, and sea transport. Likewise, sanitary cords are included which is the restriction of entry or exit from a locality, commune, or region. 
And it's a wrap. We hope you now know how to properly quarantine yourself when the need arises. Please like, share, and drop your thoughts on this video in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're new to this space. Whilst you subscribe, click on the bell like notification button for more juicy videos. Bye!